Out in the vast state of Texas is an area in Crosby County near where the eastern edge of the Panhandle hits the Red River, where there is a lake called Blanco Canyon Reservoir. Into this reservoir juts a small peninsula, a rocky, grassy plateau that was once simply called the Holding Point on the North Blanco, with the North Blanco being the old name for the White River. The area was a bit precocious due to its steep 200-foot drop-off into a sheer cliff, but this was what made it a popular place for passing ranchers to hold herds while they rested, due to the fact that the cliff served as a sort of natural fence and there was ample grass and water at the top. A herd could just be plopped there for a while without having to worry much, with none of the animals willingly toppling over the precipice to their deaths. This all worked out quite nicely for a while, and the trail bosses made this a frequent stop, but in the 1800s, there was a series of very bizarre events that would cast a sinister light on the place and earn it a rather ominous nickname, Stampede Mesa. It all allegedly started one day in the fall of 1889, when a cattle herd was brought here by some trail bosses, but they were all disappointed to see that someone had built a brand new homestead right there upon the best prime grazing land. As they tried to figure out what to do and how to reroute the herd, an ominous storm began to rise out of nowhere, with black clouds quickly rolling out over what had been a totally clear sky not long before, and the rumble of thunder became increasingly louder as flashes of lightning flickered across the darkening landscape. The main trail boss, a man named Sawyer, decided that he did not much like taking several hours to regroup the herd and lead them around the mesa, not in the face of a brewing storm. So he got it into his head just to drive the cattle straight through the homestead. Aided by the booming claps of thunder and the lightning lashing across the sky, Sawyer fired his pistol into the air, waved a blanket, and made as much noise as he could in order to conjure up a stampede. This worked, and over a thousand steers in his care bolted into a mass of heaving panic straight through the homestead, crushing everything in its wake and leaving several innocent people dead. The problem was, the cattle did not stop the utter annihilation of the homestead, and indeed did not stop at all, racing right over the mesa to go careening over the cliffs on the other side. When the dust cleared, the wake of the destruction led to almost all of the steers lying dead and dashed upon the rocks below, as well as a few of Sawyer's men, their horses taken over by the same senseless panic as the cattle. Undeterred, Sawyer ordered the few hundred remaining cattle to be rounded up and driven on to their destination without so much as a proper burial for the ranch hands or innocent homesteaders who had died in the chaos, simply leaving them there strewn about and smashed on the rocks to rot. Because of this reckless abandon and cold-heartedness, it was said that Sawyer never got work as a trail boss ever again and ended up vanishing without a trace. The area became known as Stampede Mesa, and whether it was because of all this darkness and death or not, the place became known for being intensely haunted. Indeed, the very following season, another group of cattle pokes were out there on the mesa, when for no reason at all, their entire herd suddenly bolted in unison for the cliffs and went recklessly pouring right over to their deaths, along with several ranch hands. According to tales, this happened again and again, aided by sudden storms that sprang out of nowhere, and in some cases, even the presence of spectral entities. One cowboy at the time, named Lon Schuler, had an account claiming that he had seen the mysterious wraith-like beings described as ghost cows up on the mesa in 1902. After heading there despite all the ghostly rumors already swirling at the time, he would say of the whole bizarre experience thus. Spring of Oct 2. It was me. Me, an old pal of mine, feller named George Ramp. I think that was his last name. We signed on for an engine beef drive, going plumb to Montana. Got up on the North Blanco, the bosses say, we are gonna hold on the point. Let me tell you, about half the crew drew their time right then. Me and old George though, we was a fella pissing vinegar and wasn't no spook story gonna scare us. Them old hands, they told us we were crazy if we stayed, but we done it anyway. Me and George, we drew second watch. That's from about 10 in the evening to about two in the morning. We decided we'd ride double circle, one of us going round the herd one way and one going the other, so we'd cross twice each time we go around, and if we see anything peculiar, we could warn each other. It was right on towards midnight by the way the dipper was setting. I was on the east side. That's when them things started coming out of the brush. 
Looked like cows, but not like no cows I ever saw. They was plum white, white as milk. They didn't make no sound at all, and then didn't look like they were walked. They just sort of floated by. Now I was riding a claybank gelding, one of the steadiest horses I ever had. Never knew that horse to shy at anything before, but he sure didn't want nothing to do with them things. Trouble was we couldn't get away from him. They was everywhere. I hit at one with my hand. It just went in. Felt like hitting into a cold smoke. I hollered real loud, look out George, they gonna run. And sure enough, they did. George, he was on the west side, and he taken his lariat and commenced to hitting the leaders in their noses, trying to turn them. Don't never let nobody tell you you can turn a herd by shooting in front of them. All that does is scare them worse and make them run faster. Well, the fellers that wasn't out there with me and George, all they had to do was pull their boots on and grab them saddled horses. While we did lose about 200 head, we managed to turn them into a mill and keep the rest from going over the side. That trail boss, he came right up to me hollering. God damn it, Lon, he says. It was your holler started that run. I ought to pull you off that horse and stomp your head in. Now, George, he wasn't a cussing sort of feller. Oh, he'd say hell or damn every now and then, but he wasn't a big cusser. He laid into that trail boss, and I swear he called him everything but a white man. When he got through, he told that feller, if Lon hadn't hollered when he did, I'd be down there with them cows. We was up here. You wasn't. That was no low-flying nighthawk or rabbit or possum loose in the herd. We seen them things. They was ghosts, cow ghosts. And we are drawing our time right now. Cause neither one of us damn fool enough to keep working for a damn fool like you. And we gonna let everybody we run into all the way back to Lampasas County. Just what kind of a damn fool you are holding a herd on Stampede Mesa. We done it too. And that feller never bossed another herd. Other phenomena that were reported over the years at Stampede Mesa include apparitions of ghost cowboys, sometimes atop glowing spectral mounts, ghostly horses wandering about, and the bizarre sight of ghostly stampedes flickering and playing out in the clouds above. There were also reports of the disembodied sounds of stampedes when nothing was there, shrieks and screams, and anomalous lights. The reputation of Stampede Mesa being a haunted and accursed place grew to the point that the cattle ranchers began to avoid the area altogether, and the herds that once wandered about this mesa dried up. In later days, many of these phenomena persist, and this has come to build a reputation as being one of the most haunted places in Texas. The tale has gone on to become the inspiration for the song Ghost Riders in the Sky by Stan Jones which has gone on to be recorded by the likes of Burl Ives, Bing Crosby, Peggy Lee, Spike Jones, Dick Dale, Tom Jones, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, and others. And this would influence the Doors in their song, Riders of the Storm. It is indeed the most oft-recorded Western song of all time, and the story is even supposedly the inspiration for the Marvel Comics character, Ghost Rider. There is every chance that all this was born of an eerie legend. But the fact remains that even on this day, there are various paranormal phenomena reported from the area. Is this all due to some evil force inhabiting the Mesa? Or is it the ghosts of that fateful stampede instigated by the Mad Sawyer over a century ago? Or is it the spooky myth that has grown to take on a life of its own? 